It's Takedown. Takedown Media, everybody. I'm Scott Casper. Our coverage of the sport continues this week. We venture to the University of Missouri. The Nike hot seat needed a guest, and we got a great one. The head coach of the Missouri Tigers, Brian Smith. Good morning, Coach. How are you? Doing great, Scott. Four topics to discuss today. The, okay. Of course, we'll start with uh, Missouri checking in at number four in the NWCA USA Wrestling National Poll. We also want to talk a bit about uh, Willie Miklas being named the USA Wrestling Athlete of the Week. We'll talk about your victory over Ohio State, 26 to 17. And then, of course, uh, we have one other topic, and that's Mays and Lewis leading Missouri to a 27 to 9 win over Ohio. So, first, coach, uh, congratulations on what some would would have thought that this was going to be a rebuilding year. It has turned out to be not a rebuilding year. Uh. I don't like to think of any any year as a rebuilding year. You hope you're do, doing your job right and your assistants and your staff, that you have talent in the room and they can replace, you know, we're replacing 60% of our starting lineup, which is not easy. But uh, going into this season, I knew the beginning of the year could be difficult just because we don't know what type of team we have. But they've uh, proved that theory wrong because we went out to Vegas and won Vegas, and now they've beaten Ohio State and Ohio U, two top 25 teams. So it's... It's been a good early season, and I like the effort that the team's giving. Coach, talk to us a little bit about facing off against a returning champ in Ohio State. Uh, everybody has it in their mind that, you know, Ohio State, returning champ, insert name of school here. You know, that's that's a game you got to get up for. Yeah, it's definitely a challenge. And, you know, the theme of the week was we have two dual meets because we had to wrestle Ohio on Sunday, and you don't want your kids to look past you know just look look at the big duel that the school is promoting this ohio state duel we had a great crowd it was electric but you also have to know that you have to wrestle two matches in that weekend but i definitely could feel the difference in the atmosphere between the ohio state match and the ohio and even the way we wrestled which i wasn't pleased we wrestled real flat against ohio but against ohio state we had people stepping up at a couple weights you know a lot of weights but especially a couple weights and pulling some upsets on paper and uh, helping us win a, another duel meet. Talk about Jaden Cox in particular, because he has just absolutely become the athlete that you knew he always was, and he's just shining. Yeah, he's having another great season. You know, he, he lost on a DQ at uh, Ohio University just with he went out of bounds, and the kid they called it a penalty point. But the effort he's given throughout the entire season so far, it's just a, it's it's really. People don't just see it on the mat. I see it in the practice room and what he's doing in the weight room and what he's doing with his uh, life and like in the cafeteria, the way he's eating. It's just he's very, very motivated to win the national title this year. Enjoyable interview, too, I got to tell you. Young men can talk and, and uh, really be able to emote uh, his feelings well. I like that. Uh, before you uh, went on the road, I think you were ranked eighth, if I'm reading, reading correctly. But picking up those two top 25 victories over the weekend have propelled you into the number four spot. A lot of coaches say that rankings don't mean anything. I, I disagree. I think rankings are a good, uh, a, a good idea uh, of, of just where you are, where you want to be. Um, you agree? Rankings, they definitely mean a lot. And when I say that, it doesn't mean a lot to me as a coach because it doesn't win us anything that we're fourth in the country right now. And, you know, it's where we want to be at the end. But for the media, for the fan base, for just the attention of the sport, it's great to have these issues, you know, these things going on, the talk with where teams are ranked. And I see Twitter battles between people and saying, how is this team ranked like that? And that stuff is good for the sport. That grows the sport, that it draws interest. And I think interest in the sport and, and rankings do that. So definitely to say rankings don't matter would be the wrong thing to say. It, in my room, I tell them it, it doesn't matter because we gotta, everybody improves over a season. And it's the team that improves the most and, and gets in and focuses on the little details. And the great thing of wrestling a tough schedule like we do, we have Ohio State, Ohio. We have Oklahoma State later, Cornell later, Oklahoma. We have a real tough dual schedule and, and tough tournaments. That you, it, 
you challenge yourself, you, you can sometimes be exposed on the mat where you're going to have a weakness. And that's a good thing. I really, I like that in my program that we wrestle a challenging schedule because when you do get exposed on the mat, you know what you have to go back and work in work on in the practice room and I think that's real important if you just have this easy schedule and you're, you're doing well you don't realize you, you won't put yourself in those tough positions where you're gonna be challenged and maybe get beat with it and but I think when you're challenged you do make yourself better because you realize you have weaknesses I'm gonna call him this because I've known him for a long time I truly believe that Willie Miklas is a star and he defeated Kenny Quartz by way of a 15-0 tech fall. And if that's not a star-like performance, I don't know what is. USA Wrestling seemed to agree. They made him the USA Wrestling Athlete of the Week for his performance. Talk to us about Willie Miklas. Well, he's an outstanding young man. I mean, he's a, an, an academic All-American. He's also the president of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee. So he's the president of all the student athletes here at Mizzou. So his leadership, you know, is second to none. He's an amazing kid. But then when you look at it going into those three, last three matches, I couldn't have asked for her to end any other way with Blaze Butler, a senior, Willie Miklas, All-American, and Jaden Cox, All-American. And when Willie stepped on the mat with it tied, I knew we were in pretty good shape. Willie had wrestled courts at the Vegas tournament, and it was a battle. He was actually losing the match because he gave up a couple takedowns early, but he came back and got on top of them and got some turns and ended up winning the match by a major. So we felt pretty confident, but you never know what's going to happen with the atmosphere. The crowd was going crazy, and you just hope he didn't go out and go too hard in the first period, you know, and burn himself out. But he went out and scored points and then continued to score points and stayed on the attack. And next thing you look up and the match is over about the six minute mark and he tech fall the guy. We talked to Brian, uh, uh, Brian Smith rather. And I will tell you this, you can follow Brian Smith and his Tigers online at mutigers.com, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Mizzou Wrestling there. Uh, do want to continue on. You guys uh, have an opportunity to continue uh, this incredible rush to greatness. 32 consecutive duels, Coach, you guys have won. Next up, I believe you face Kent State in Kent, Ohio. You go back to that state. Uh, what are your thoughts about uh, facing Kent State? You know, they have some really, really good individuals, and they're having a great season as a team. You know, with Ian Miller at 57, I know they got the Baxter kid at 84, and I've just watched they have some young kids in the lineup that are wrestling really hard. So we've got to be prepared. This is always a week that scares me as a coach because it's exam week, and we're having, you know, practices during the week. They're shorter. You know, we're trying to get them in and out and let them go study and get the study groups and get their test done. But I know the mental drain on the student athlete this week is difficult. That that's why we're just, you know, preparing a little differently. But I don't I don't like to change. But I know you have to during this week. But I, I just know this is just another speed bump in the road for our team and a challenge. And we'll see how they react to it when we get up to Kent, you know, Kent State, which is another big duel for us to, you know, continue on the road to win the dual meet championship portion of the uh, MAC tournament. When you took over the program, did you ever think you'd have 32 consecutive wins? Uh, probably in those first three years, I would have told you you're crazy. But <laughs> no, I, 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 it's it's fun because it's Tiger style. One of the th the parts of the philosophy is being uh, recruiting people that love and surrounding yourself with people that love to compete. And I think if you walk in our practice room before matches, they're playing touch football and competing hard, and I have to calm them down. They're playing, you know, they're, they're wanting to win the Tiger Cup, you know, which is all the sports combined and community service, academics and all that. So I have a team that is, I, I think it was a grad assistant coach from football one time. I was watching a dodgeball competition between all the sports. And he said, look at all the wrestlers down there. They all showed up for this competition. And, uh, man, the wrestlers are just crazy competitive. And he said it in a, almost a negative way. And I looked over at him and I said, thank you. <laughs> That's a compliment. That's what I want my team to be, that crazy competitiveness that every competition, they're there to win it. And they're prepared to win it. And that's kind of, that's how, you, that's how you become consistent with your competitions. And I think that's a credit to everybody involved in our program that what we've done here. You give high, high marks to Jaden Cox, your 97-pound star, uh, for a lot of reasons. Do you take any points away for his songwriting and composing ability? No, his songwriting, I think, may be better than his wrestling, and that's saying a lot. His, he's a very, very talented young man. He plays 
I don't know, four or five different instruments. He can sing with the best of them. And, you know, it's, it's just, we asked, I asked him to write a song for this fundraiser, which was about a month and a half ago, back in October, I guess, or two months ago. And he really didn't want to do it, but I talked him into it. I told him it could go viral and all this. It would be fun to do. And then he wrote this, the song based on the one more philosophy of our program on how giving more, you know, you get so much in return. And it's a beautiful song that, you know, he wrote. And he did it with a couple of his teammates helping out. And he would come down to my basement and practice. And then when he did it in front of 500 people on a little stage in a stool in the middle of the center of a, the basketball court with 500 people there that were donors, it was an amazing performance. Amazing. We're going to take and uh, a little bit of his music can go to break with that coach. Uh, I think it's an appropriate way to salute a very talented young man. Looking ahead, coach, uh, there's uh, a lot of wrestling still in front of us as we make our way to the Big Apple in March. Uh, of course, conference is uh, facing you square, square down. Uh, you've got some great competition within conference this year, coach, uh, including uh, Central Michigan. Talk to us a little bit about the preparation for Central Michigan and schools within conference like Kent State. Well, the, I, I looked at the beginning of the year and we had five teams in the top 25 in the MAC. Mm. And Central Michigan has one of the most balanced teams I've seen in a long time. They have a guy I think that is, you know, top 25 in every weight and uh, a bunch of guys nationally ranked. So that's going to uh, cause for. You know, a big challenge for us. You have Old Dominion has three kids ranked, I think, in the top ten right now. And they have a solid team. And then you have Eastern Michigan, who's having one of their best years. And I see what David Bolliard's doing there. He's building a program. And it just goes on and on. Schwab has a great, you know, we beat them in a duel, but that was 24 to 19. That was a, a dog fight. So this conference just continues to get better and better, and which is a credit to the, you know, I think there's some great young coaches in our conference. And you know, when you look at the states they're in, they're, they're great high school wrestling states, too. So it doesn't surprise me. It's one of the reasons we wanted to move to the MAC because we just saw just how good this conference can be with all the talents that, that, that can be in it and is in it. Brian Smith has been our guest today, Coach. The Tiger fans are out there. The Tiger faithful, they are not just following you. They are involved, and uh, it's, it's important to note how many people show up to the dual meets, how many people stay for the get-togethers, and, and uh, you love the interaction with Mizzou Wrestling and Mizzou Wrestling fans. What would you like to tell them for the holidays? Oh, just this, this weekend that we just had was amazing. We had over 80-plus former wrestlers come back for the dual meet with their families, and the atmosphere at Ohio State was electric. I had some people from other sports and from uh, uh, fans of other sports at Mizzou tell me it was one of the most exciting sporting events they've been to Mizzou in a couple of years. So it was just great that people are starting to see that the wrestling program is it's a tradition now. It's, it's not just a, a blip on the map that it's a one-year thing. That we, We've been consistent now for about 14 straight years. And people are starting to come over where the crowds keep continue to grow. As always, our administration is phenomenal with the support they give us. But I hope they all have a great, a, an amazing holiday with family and friends and enjoy it and get back to watch us when we open up the second semester with, uh, I think we have uh, Buffalo for our Beauty and the Beast meet on the 9th, if I'm not mistaken, and, and the, on the 8th, and then Cornell on the 10th at Jesse Auditorium on the stage. So we're looking forward to it. I want to thank Andrew Melro for helping make today's interview possible, one of the great SIDs and uh, uh, contributors to uh, the world of sport. Thanks to him. Thanks to all of our friends at Takedown and, and uh, the producers here. also want to thank Brian Smith for being our guest today. Brian, it's always good to talk to you. You do it the right way. I've told you that for years. But it's fun watching somebody that understands that, uh, you know what, it's okay to do things the right way. You never know. You just might get the right results. And by God, you get them every single year. MUTigers.com online, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Look for them there, Mizzou Wrestling. And you can follow along at MUTigers.com online as well. Get your tickets, season tickets, easy enough to get. Still plenty of home matches you can take part in. Follow along. They're ranked number four in the country. The Mizzou Tigers are for real. Brian, thanks for the time. Thanks, Scott, and you have a great holiday.